Congratulations on your purchase of IntelliKey, the most sophisticated key control system in the world. This video is intended to familiarize lock installers with the IntelliKey system and provide the information they need to install our products. IntelliKey's advanced capabilities are made possible by sensitive electronic components which must be installed with care. After reviewing this video, if you do not understand a specific procedure, refer to the instruction booklets included in each product box and our installation manual for offline systems, or contact your IntelliKey dealer. The components of the IntelliKey system are the electronic cylinder with its attached cable, the electronic door control unit, or DCU, and the intelligent key, the IntelliKey. This key can store pre-programmed access information. When the key is inserted into the lock, the electronic cylinder transmits the information from the key's memory through the cylinder cable to the door control unit. The DCU is the decision-making component of the system. If the information from the key is acceptable to the DCU's program, it sends an electronic signal back to the cylinder to activate the locking mechanism and allows the key holder to rotate the key. IntelliKey System Flexibility In order for our system to work easily with the most standard locks and doors, we have designed a number of different style electronic cylinders and door control units. As an installer, your first responsibility is to make sure the IntelliKey components match the existing lock set and door. It's important for you to see these different components before you attempt your first installation. IntelliKey makes two types of cylinder configurations, fixed and rotating. The fixed cylinder works as an electronic key reading device only. This cylinder is used in conjunction with devices such as parking gates, elevators, turnstiles, electric locks, electric strikes, and magnetic locks. The rotating cylinder is used in conjunction with mechanical locking devices, where rotation of the cylinder retracts or throws a latch bolt. These locking devices include traditional mortise locks, panic devices, deadbolts, and lever handles. The rotating mortise cylinder will mechanically operate all mortise type lock sets. The cam on the rear of the cylinder is interchangeable, so it can be used to activate any locking mechanism. Three styles of cams are available from IntelliKey. The rotating rim cylinder is designed for use with doors that use a rim mounted locking device. A cam conversion kit is also available from IntelliKey to convert rotating mortise cylinders to rim cylinder use in the field. IntelliKey also has special application rotating cylinders that use a reinforced latch bolt in place of a cam. These cylinders can be used on cabinets or other closures where space is restricted. The IntelliKey cylindrical lever lock is designed for use with doors that now have mechanical lever or knob lock sets. This unit replaces the existing lock set entirely with virtually no additional modification to the door. The IntelliKey gate lock is designed for use on swing gates. This unit is self-contained and can be either bolted or welded on the existing gate. Door control units are available in three styles, standard profile, narrow profile, or mortised. All of these DCUs perform the same control functions and are completely interchangeable. The decision to use one style over another is usually determined by the space available on the door for its installation. The standard door control unit can be used on most solid interior and exterior doors. The narrow profile DCU was designed for use with storefront doors, but can also be used whenever space on the door is limited. The IntelliKey mortise case gives you the option to hide the door control unit inside the door itself. This type of installation improves security and leaves the closed door free of any additional trim hardware. In situations where the decor of the existing doorway has to be maintained, the mortise case installation is the best solution. All of these door control units are battery powered. For high-use doors, or doors that use electric locking devices, the door control unit should be remotely powered. We will cover remote power equipment and installations later in this video. Installation Guidelines 
Here are some general guidelines that you should follow when installing all IntelliKey products. Remember these three points. 1. The existing lock set will always determine the type of IntelliKey electronic cylinder to use. 2. The existing door design will determine the placement of the door control unit on the door. 3. The material the door is made of and its construction will determine the types of tools you will need, the fasteners you must use, and the installation techniques you will employ. Do's and Don'ts The door control unit is always placed on the secured side of the door. Always remove the existing lock set completely before drilling any holes in the door. Do not touch any of the electronic circuitry. In most cases, the electrics module will come from the box already attached to the metal mounting plate. Always hold the electronic circuitry by the mounting plate. Do not allow any metal objects to touch the circuit board. That includes tools or any metal filings. Do not cut or twist the cylinder cable. The wires encased in this cable are delicate. Always handle the cable with care. Installation Instructions Mortise Lock Let's examine the installation of the IntelliKey standalone system on a wood door with a standard mortise lock. The first thing you should do when you arrive at the door location is inspect the contents of the box. Often the installer will have a work order or installation schedule that outlines the IntelliKey system intended for each door location. Make sure that the contents of the box matches the work order, door, and the existing lock set. For installation, the box should include one electronic cylinder, one cylinder color, the standard width mounting plate with mounted lock electronics module, two batteries, the battery pack with its connecting wire attached, and a small coin cell battery. If the lock electronics module has been programmed, you may find the small coin battery already installed in the circuit board. The box will also have the escutcheon or cover for the door electronics, an escutcheon gasket, and a pack of four self-tapping screws and two security screws. You should also have the IntelliKey electronic key for that door location. The IntelliKey electronic key and DCU for the lock you are installing must be programmed in order to operate. You may want to verify that it has prior to installation. Also, remember that the key will not turn in the cylinder until the cylinder cable is connected to the door control unit. Before you start an installation, be sure to inspect the existing lock to ensure that everything is in good working order. Start the installation by removing the existing lock set. With most mortise lock sets, this will mean removing the scalp plate, backing off the cylinder retaining screw, and unscrewing the mechanical cylinder from the lock body. The next step involves drilling the cylinder cable access hole in the face of the door, opposite the existing cylinder hole. We recommend a half inch hole be used in a wood door of this type. To drill this hole accurately, use the IntelliKey cylinder cable access hole jig. Insert the jig directly into the cylinder hole and tighten the cylinder set screw into the keyway on the jig. This will hold the jig firmly in place and locate the hole in the correct position. Use the hole in the jig as a guide for a quarter inch drill bit. This hole will be used as a pilot hole for the half inch hole saw. Finish drilling the cylinder cable access with a one half inch hole saw. When this is done, remove all of the debris from the mortise pocket. The door is now prepared and you can start to install the IntelliKey system. At this point, you want to compare the cam on the IntelliKey cylinder with the cam on the existing cylinder to verify that the new cylinder is compatible with the lock mechanism. Now, reinstall the lock set in hardware. When this is done, you are ready to install the electronic cylinder. Insert the cable through the security rings, into the cylinder hole, lock case, and out the access hole. Be sure the cylinder set screw is retracted, and carefully thread the cylinder into the lock case, making sure to rotate the cable as you turn the cylinder to prevent it from twisting. Take care not to cross-thread the cylinder as you turn it in. It is important to install the IntelliKey cylinder properly the first time. The more attempts that are made, the greater the risk of damaging the cylinder.
The cylinder is properly positioned when the can is approximately in the center line of the lock case, or one or two turns beyond, and the two LEDs on the face are positioned directly in line with the keyway. Also, the front face of the cylinder must be flush with the front face of the collar. The cylinder must never appear recessed in the collar. This will prevent the key from rotating properly and would damage the key. Hand tighten the cylinder set screw, making sure it is set properly into the set screw slot on the cylinder. You can usually feel the screw entering the slot. Never over tighten. Excessive set screw pressure may damage the cylinder. You are now ready to install the door control unit. Carefully insert the wires through the hole in the mounting plate. Place the mounting plate on the door, ensuring that it sits squarely over the cable access hole. Mark the position of the four mounting screws. Remove the mounting plate and drill a pilot hole for each of the screws. Replace the mounting plate on the door and attach it with the four number six screws. Do not pinch the wires underneath the chassis. You are now ready to make the connections between the electronic cylinder and the door control unit. First, remove the key. Then insert the battery pack under the battery clamp on the mounting plate. If the small coin backup battery is not installed on the circuit board, install it now, under the clip and into the battery holder. Make sure that the plus sign on the battery is visible to you, with the negative pole of the battery facing the circuit board. Connect the cylinder cable to the connector on the DCU and lay the excess length of cable behind the battery clip. Connect the cable from the battery pack to the control module. Warning! If the clock backup battery had been installed during programming and prior to installation, do not insert a key into the cylinder until after the installation is complete and the battery pack is in place. Otherwise, the key will quickly drain the small battery of all its power. The next step will be to mount the escutcheon and gasket to the mounting plate. To attach the gasket, lay the escutcheon on a flat surface with the inside facing up. Carefully remove one end of the paper backing from the gasket. Start at the top and lay the gummed side of the gasket onto the rim of the escutcheon and press down firmly. Work down one side by removing the paper and pressing down the gasket as you go. Be careful not to stretch the gasket material. When the first side is done, start at the top again and work down the other side. We recommend that the gasket be used on all installations. If you look at the escutcheon, you'll see that there is a slot at the top. This interlocks with the mounting plate. The lower end fastens to the mounting plate with two security screws. These screws require a special tool for operation. This completes the physical installation of the IntelliKey electronic lock. If the DCU was programmed before you installed it and the backup battery was installed, it is now ready to operate. If the DCU backup battery was not installed prior to programming, the time and date should be set using a laptop computer and a CPU or a RAC restricted authorization key. The lock should be programmed prior to its first use. Before closing the door, ensure that the lock, cylinder and keys all function properly. This installation was simple because the door was clear and the location of the DCU was not restricted by the existing hardware. Let's take a look at another wood door that has an escutcheon lock. This situation presents some different challenges for the installer because the mounting plate cannot be positioned directly across the lock cylinder. In this case, the mounting plate is best placed above the existing escutcheon with an additional access hole drilled so that the electrical connections can be made. Mark the intended location of the mounting plate. For this installation, you should give the mounting plate at least 3 sixteenths of an inch clearance above the existing hardware to accommodate the IntelliKey escutcheon. When this is done, proceed to remove and check the existing hardware in the same steps as we have previously shown. Next, a hole has to be drilled to provide a channel for connecting the cylinder cable to the DCU location. The center point for this hole should be two and one-half inches above the center of the cylinder hole. Using a long three-eighths inch bit, drill squarely into the door approximately three-eighths of one inch, then downward at about a ten degree angle to the door surface until you enter the lock cavity. After removing all the debris from the mortise pocket, reinstall the lock case and place the electronic cylinder into position. Now, 
Lead a piece of stiff wire from the top hole down to the lock case and out the hole. This will be used to guide the cylinder cable up the channel to the top hole. Carefully hold the connections in line with the wires and connect them with electrical tape. Do not twist the wires together or make a hook in the pull wire, for this might cause the connector to pull off the cylinder cable. Pull the cable up through the top hole, making sure it does not get snagged. If it gets caught, pull it down and try again. After reinstalling the escutcheon hardware, position the mounting plate to your marks and attach it to the door with the four screws. Install the cover and make sure the lock works properly before closing the door. Thumb turns. On locks with thumb turns, position the DCU 3 16 of an inch above the thumb and turn the security ring for adequate cover clearance. Adams Wright Instructions. The Adams Wright type lock installation will require the use of the IntelliKey narrow style mounting plate and escutcheon, as well as various thicknesses of blocking rings. First, check the locking mechanism to make sure that all of the functions are working properly. Then remove the existing lock components. At this stage, you must compare the cam on the IntelliKey cylinder with the cam on the existing cylinder to verify that the new cylinder will operate the lock mechanism. The door can now be prepared for the installation. On the inside face of the door, measure up 1 and 3 8 inches from the top of the existing cylinder or thumb turn hole. This will be the center mark for the cylinder cable access hole. This hole should have the same backset center line as the cylinder hole. Drill a three-quarter inch hole. Here we are using a bimetal hole saw. If you use a standard twist drill, start with a one-sixteenth pilot hole, followed by the three-quarter inch drill. Deburr all of the edges of the hole with a round file or deburring tool. Now, hold the narrow mounting plate on the surface of the door to mark the locations of the four mounting screw holes. The bottom of the mounting plate should be three quarters of an inch above the thumb turn hole and cover the newly drilled hole. Drill four seven sixty-fourth inch holes for the mounting plate. Now reinstall the lock set. Install the cylinder security collar and then the correct thickness blocking ring. Next, Bend the cylinder cable flat against the cam, then bend it out 90 degrees from the cam face. Carefully lead the cable through the door and thread the cylinder into place. As you can see, the 90 degree bend in the cable will help to prevent the cable from being damaged or twisted as you turn the cylinder in. Before you turn the cylinder to its final position, you will have to lead the cylinder cable through the lock and out the access hole. The wire should travel around to the exterior side of the lock and over the top support bar in the lock case. Guide the cable gently inside the door as you turn the cylinder into its final position. Put the cylinder cable through the mounting plate and fasten the mounting plate to the surface of the door with the four sheet metal screws. Connect the batteries, cylinder cable, and install the escutcheon with its gasket. Mount all of the lock hardware and test the lock before closing the door. IntelliKey Cylindrical Lever Lock Instructions The IntelliKey Cylindrical Lever Lock is the electronic version of the standard lever lock. If you are installing this lock in an existing door, the IntelliKey Cylindrical Lever Lock Drilling Jig is an indispensable tool for the installer. This jig will allow you to locate and drill the holes required for this installation quickly and accurately. Begin the installation by making sure the lock set you have is the correct model for the door. Then remove the existing lock hardware entirely. You should now verify that the existing holes and hole locations are correct. This lock requires a 2 and 1 8 inch hole through the door. If you do not have a cylindrical lever lock set drilling jig, follow the layout on the paper template included in the product box to locate the two bolt holes and the cable access hole. Drill the bolt hole 5 16 of an inch all the way through the door, making sure that the drill bit is held at a true 90 degree angle to the door's surface. If you use the drilling jig, these holes will be accurately located in reference to the 2 and 1 half inch hole. The cable access hole is drilled at a 45 degree angle upwards through the door and at a slight angle about 15 degrees towards the edge of the door.
The jig for this hole uses the two bolt holes as a reference and greatly simplifies the alignment of this 3 8 inch hole. Remove all the debris from the door before you continue. Insert the latch, making sure the beveled edge of the bolt faces the strike plate and check the fit. If it fits correctly, attach it to the door with the screws provided in the package. If you have to modify the door for a correct fit, there are detailed measurements given in the instruction booklet. You are now ready to disassemble the lock and install it into the door. Start by loosening the set screw on the inside lever and remove the lever from the lock. Slip the rose scalp off the shaft and remove the two through screws. When these are out, Remove the inside rose casting assembly from the lock. When you are ready, insert the lock and gently push the ribbon cable up through the access hole as the lock goes in. When the lock gets midway into the door, make sure it engages the latch mechanism correctly. Do not force the lock body in. Make sure the lock case hooks the retaining legs on the latch and the retractor in the lock body engages with the bolt tail. You can now install the inside rose casting, making sure the groove on the rose casting lines up with the drive lug on the lock body spindle. Fasten the rose assembly with the two bolts. Then slip the rose scalp in place and install the inside lever handle. Do not over tighten the set screw. You should now test the lever to make sure that it operates the latch smoothly. The door control unit can now be attached to the inside of the door in the usual manner. However, special attention should be given to the connection of the cylinder cable. This ribbon cable is inserted into a Euro-style connector. If the ribbon is not positioned squarely with the connector and pushed in unevenly prior to closing the connector, it will easily fall out. If you are installing this lock on a metal door, we recommend that you slip a piece of heavy shrink wrap over the ribbon cable before the installation begins. This will help protect the delicate cable from getting nicked or cut on any sharp surface. Mortis Case DCU IntelliKey's Mortis Door Control Unit improves door security by hiding the DCU inside the door. The installation of this unit requires additional door preparation and tools. We'll cover some of the basics for mounting this unit now. Detailed installation instructions can be found in the instruction booklet that is enclosed in the product box. The mortise case can be installed either above or below the lock. However, you must remember the cylinder cable is only 9 inches long, so it must be mounted as close to the existing lock as possible. You will need a maximum clear surface area of 13 and 3 quarter inches on the door to cut the mortise and be able to cut into the door to a depth of at least 1 and 3 quarter inches, 11 sixteenths of an inch wide. No matter what technique is used to cut the mortise pocket, it's important that you provide enough room to give the case a nice sliding fit in order to access the batteries. It's best to remove the door control electronics from the mortise case to prevent damage to the electronics. After the mortise pocket is finished and the door area is cleaned of any debris, the installation of the electronic cylinder can proceed as normal. With this installation, special caution must be given to the cylinder cable. In most other installations, the DCU is mounted solidly to the door before the cylinder cable is installed. In this case, you will have to connect the cylinder cable while the DCU is being held in your hand and before you install it into the door. Always make absolutely sure you are ready to slide the mortise case into the door before you connect the cylinder cable. Never let the DCU hang by the cylinder cable. Do not twist or pinch the cable as you slide it into the door. Electronic Euro Cylinder IntelliKey's Electronic Euro Cylinder is designed to retrofit European lock assemblies. The procedure is similar to the standard installations you have already seen in this video. Refer to the instruction booklet and template in the product box for detailed drilling instructions for the cable access hole. Make sure the cylinder cam is set in the center position and feed the communications cable through the access hole, being careful to prevent creasing, and insert the electronic cylinder. Mount the DCU, whether surface mount or mortise case, in accordance with the installations previously illustrated. Remote Power Units 
All of the IntelliKey door control units can be powered from a regulated 12-volt DC power supply instead of the battery. In all cases, this power supply is mounted in a remote location, not on the door. Let's take a look at two of the most common remote power installations. In the first installation, a standard mortise lock has been converted to the IntelliKey system. The electronic cylinder has been installed and the standard width DCU is mounted on the secured side of the door. A power wire replacing the battery is run from the control module into the door through an access hole to the hinge side where it emerges and is taken into the door frame using a door loop. In this installation, the power wire is run through the wall to an IntelliKey 505 power supply located above the ceiling. The power supply also has a backup battery. In our second example, the door control unit is mounted alongside of the remote power supply. In this installation, a cylinder extension cable extends from the electronic cylinder through an access hole in the door and up to the DCU. IntelliKey has 12-foot cylinder extension cables with an audible buzzer for this type of installation. Instructions for these installations and suggested layouts for electric strikes and magnetic locks can be found in the instruction manual. Maintenance The cylinder makes beeping sounds which can help you determine how it is operating. No beep at all could mean the cylinder is not connected properly or the batteries are faulty. Potential problems and solutions The cylinder will not unlock does not beep. In this case, the battery or electronic board is defective or the cylinder cable could be cut or not connected properly. Solution. Insert the battery test unit and test the batteries for power. If the voltage reading is 8.5 volts or less, check the pin connectors for positive connection. Make certain that no power or communications wires have been pinched or severed. Also, check the key shaft for straightness. The LEDs in the key and lock must line up squarely for proper operation. If the problem still exists, do a second cylinder test. Replace the cylinder and test the functions again. If the problem remains, replace the electronics board in key. Cylinder will not unlock. Beeps once. Solution. Make sure that the cam is not contacting the cylinder cable and that the cylinder set screw is not too tight. Check that no power wires have been pinched or severed. Do the second cylinder test. If the system beeps once but does not unlock, replace the electronics board. Cylinder will not unlock, beeps twice. Solution. Make sure both lock and key have been properly programmed. The lock must have the key copy number enabled in order to function. You may be inserting the wrong key. You can also use the restricted authorization key to pinpoint the cause. Refer to the manual for a more detailed explanation of this process and the meaning of the error codes. Cylinder operates, but lock will not retract. Solution. Make sure the IntelliKey cam operates the existing lock set. Make sure the key is being turned in the proper direction. Cylinder rotates in lock set. Solution. Make sure the cylinder set screw is tight. Should any of these procedures fail to solve your problem, you may require some specialized help. Refer to your detailed operations manual or call your dealer.